Excellency, sir, I request to your permission to first thank Allah, the Almighty Creator and Sustainer of all that exists in the heavens and, and the earth, seen and unseen, for granting us the journey, mercy, and good health without which this visit wouldn't have been possible. Similarly, we wish to express our sincere appreciation to Your Excellency for granting us this uh, request to be with you. This is the second time you have done so without hesitation. We thank you. In addition, we bring to you the felicitation of this season, the goodwill and warm regards of our national leader, Alhaji Muhammad Saad Abubakar, the Sultan of Sokoto, and President General, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, as well as our leader in the South South and the highest Muslim traditional ruler, His Royal Highness Alhaji Haliri Momo, Ataru of Aoji Sacred Kingdom. Our visit today, Your Excellency, is part of activities marking the end of uh, yesterday, the month long fast Ramadan worldwide. It is intended to provide Your Excellency with a forum to interact with the Muslim Omar, like the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, headed by the Sultan at the national level, the River State Council for Islamic Affairs is the apex umbrella body in the state for all Muslims, Muslim communities, and Islamic organizations. I report, as the head of the council, I report directly to His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto. The Council is therefore obligated to aggregate the shared interests and challenges of the Omar with a view to calling to them attention of constituted authority. Part of our obligation as Muslims is to support those whom Allah has placed in position of authority over us, over the people. We have no doubt whatsoever, Your Excellency, that Allah has placed you squarely in authority over the people. Allah, the power giver, has done that, that you may have the opportunity to serve the people. And we have no doubt you have set the tone of service-oriented governance. In addition, your all-inclusive governance and open-door policy has firmly confirmed you as the most Muslim-friendly governor so far in the state. Our firm support for you and your administration is therefore grounded in firm moral and religious authority. So far, you have continued to justify our confidence in you and your administration, as demonstrated by your request to the Council last year to assist the government in providing solutions to the incessant uh, cases of uh, farmers' headers clash in the state. You express the wish that this clash should be brought to an end, and you urge the council to do what it can to assist the government in that regard. Your Excellency, we took this request to heart and went to work. We thought it was something we can just paper over in just two or three weeks or so. But when we went out to the field, we discovered differently. There are so many cases of intergroup problems that militate against any kind of peaceful uh, move. There's also intergroup uh, problems, challenges, everywhere, to the extent that the committee we set up have to repeatedly fall back on us, and we have to issue letters to convince those people that we are not on our own that we are also here at the behest of a governor that wants lasting peace between the headers and the farmers. While we are still battling with this, I was still trying to put together something, there erupted this, what we may please call, unholy effort that levied a war of attrition against the person of the governor and his administration. 
which war is still ongoing and even getting worse. We are not happy at all with this development. We are not politicians, but we are affected by political activities and decisions taken by people who have no control with. But we are firmly convinced that this is one government that has come out to heal the wounds in the state. We are fully convinced that this is one government that has made it priority to revamp all the uh, uh, agri-care projects abandoned so that food can be put on our table at affordable prices. This is one government that has not batted an eyelid in providing solutions to infrastructural, uh, uh, should I say, displacement by righting the wrongs, embarking on new signature projects, and making firm commitment to more. To this end, we're happy at the revival of uh, the Songhai farm, the fish farms, yeah, and many more. Even the recent loan granted to farmers to access is something very laudable because it hasn't, we haven't seen such in the last eight years. So a governor or a government that has consistently shown progression towards uh, uh, community service, towards people-oriented service, should not and does not deserve to be levied a war of attrition. Because such war is not to the interest of the people. So the people levying this war cannot claim they are fighting for rivers, uh, people. Because I don't see how you can fight me when I'm providing food, providing job, and providing a, and then you say you are fighting me. It's not correct. And we Muslims stand and stand firmly against such moves. As a matter of fact, well, let us put on record that also we are aware that the attempt to rope in the chief of staff of this uh, government is part of the war of attrition that should have no place in the political calculation of the state. We have said that what was good and very pleasing and very nice in the previous administration with the previous administrators cannot be bad and very bad in this present administration and administrator instead being the governor. Because by admission, they have admitted, and generally we've all accepted, that this is an offshoot of the previous administration. So why fight and levy a war of attrition when the offshoot government is doing exactly what probably you should have done and did not complete? And the people are very, very happy. So it's a vicarious uh, kind of a uh, prosecution that the chief of staff is facing. But I know that the one we have as governor today and the young man that is his chief of staff are men of steel valor. You can't push them around and we will not stand for it also. We call on everybody to join hands, to please join hands to rescue River State. By rescue River State is to join hands, Allah and join so that if you see somebody doing good, encourage him. If you see somebody doing bad, discourage him so that he will withdraw from that bad and enjoy what is good. So, Your Excellency, have no doubt about the support of the Muslim Ummah for your administration. Have no doubt about the prayers of the Muslim Ummah for the success of your administration. This is, these are something we have been doing. We can't go to where we are not politicians, we can't go and be but we retire to our inner closes and pray that the evil or holy interest do not succeed in their imaginations. <laughs> Your Excellency, we want to thank you because here again, you took us by surprise again, as usual, by this year, uh, Introducing, reintroducing Hajj uh, pilgrimage uh, in the states. We were wow. very ecstatic. Yes, let me tell you, we are ecstatic about this. 
And this is coming at a time there's economic crunch. This is coming at a time when the, uh, the government is looking for all the way it can muster money for development purposes. But you still find it within you to say, hey, let's get this thing done. It will help. Prayer said, prayer said at the Kaaba is answered. No. Your Excellency, the Kaaba we are talking about was the house Allah directed his prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael to build for him. He directed them to build at that spot. And they built. When they completed the building, they made a prayer and told Allah, you brought us to this wilderness and you say we should build a house. There are no houses, no villages, but we have built a house. And you have sustained us during this period. We pray that as we live here, after us, whoever comes to this place from whatever part of the world with clean hands, clean conscience, whatever the person asks of you here, grant it. And it has been so till date. The footstep, his footprint, where he stood and built that house is still there. You can go to, you see there in a glass house, you see his footprint till today. Therefore, we, when we go there and pray, usually Allah answers. So that is why we are excited. We pray here and we go over there and pray. In fact, we need now, we need the prayer now. We need to go there and pray and defeat uh, this unholy uh, interest here uh, with prayers. Your Excellency, thank you. Thank you very much. So when we got this information, we are happy. And uh, as usual, we thank you. But part of our obligation also, like I stated earlier, is to aggregate the feelings and the interests of the OMA and forward it to the constituted authority. You are the constituted authority Allah has placed over us. Therefore, when you do, we clap and we felicitate with you. If there are areas that touch us also, uh, we are also obliged to put it put across to you so that it will not be as if, uh, oh, it's all very rosy. No, human affairs is not like that. So we, are, we want to say that uh, hopefully by next year, when things improve, we need more slots. The slots, the slots given to us is good, but we, this we say more to come. So that he can, he can really go. <laughs> so that because uh, he came and we are happy, and then in the process also there were some reductions, and we said, okay, the Lord give it, the Lord uh, take it. Blessed is. He. <laughs> so we wish. Even the the vice president general was not spared either. So, but all in in good time. We pray that this is just the beginning, and we'll continue. Just one way, Your, uh, Your Excellency. The way you go about revamping agro allied business gives us the inspiration to draw your attention to this area. Sir, right there at Transamadi, there are so many rivers companies lying moribund. We have Nigeria Engineering Works, which at the time was supplying vehicle spare parts to even pan in Kaduna. Every office in this area has new. They manufacture fans, silicon, or every office, office equipment is lying fallow. We have Revoc, Rivers Vegetable Oil, and we all knew that it was in fierce competition with established uh, companies. We have a glass industry established long before that of Uheli, but Uheli is working and that of Rivers is not working. We have uh, 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 Rive Biscuits. We produce biscuits from here, many of them. By the time you revamp Songhai Farm and they were producing plantain and everything and the cassava approved, you will discover that there are no industries to absorb this thing as raw materials. So we're also trying to uh, uh, urge you to focus in revamping the industries so that the agricultural uh, ventures will have outlets for them. Then there will be a kind of uh, job explosion in the state, Your Excellency. We want to thank you and um, commend you the LLA Amok Road is good, but consider something like a flyover at Ahoda Abu Road Junction. The accidents that, that occur there is sometimes mind-boggling. The Mbiyama Yonagua uh, 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 Junction there, 
even the earlier the roundabout as it can be improved on with the, with the flyovers so that we have easy flow of traffic and all that. But last but not the least, we are seriously in partnership with your Minister of Health, especially the River State uh, um, Primary Health uh, uh, Board Management Board. All the health activities programs we are involved. Uh, my apologies, uh, my Deputy Governor, for my absence in your two of your meetings, national assignments and all that. So we are happy because these programs funded by your administration has increased the, our assets and interest in primary health care. So we are appealing that similar efforts should be made in making sure that the various um, primary health care centers across the state are up to world standard. As I speak to you, I was a member of the monitoring uh, team last year sent to our East local government. And I mistakenly asked my Okada person to drop me at the health center. And he dropped me at the health center. I said, no, this is not the health center, the, the new one. He took me there, and I had to rush back immediately. Why? At Olapata. That health center, model health center, had been taken over by courtes. In fact, I barely managed to extricate myself from there. They thought I came to survey them. But I just merely came to see what was wrong. So I went back to the old maternity where the modern center is now. And I, it was quite the start bad. So if all the health centers in the, in the state are well equipped and brought to standard, the type of standard you have in mind, which you have seen in your projects, it will be very good for us. Because our people in these areas, they balk at going to health centers when the services are such that they cannot uh, easily get access to. Your Excellency, I'll reserve some for, for the next visit. So I don't I know don't about what you. <laughs> but suffice it to say that we Muslims in this state are solidly behind you. <laughs> Muslims in this state will continue to pray for you. Certainly. Muslims in this state condemn the current effort, even directly or remotely, to truncate this administration. Through whether impeachment or through the, the say, mis prosecution of the chief of staff, all these are allied at this thing. But we are grateful you have strong team behind you. When we look and we look at we look and see the SSG, a quiet technocrat, a doctor known, I know him at all, known, not, quite, not given to his terrorists, but he's there, powerful. So we have reason to believe that you are on solid uh, ground. Of course, we have our, uh, on a personal note now, I'm very happy that this government is small, small uh, in my favor. First, my sister is there as your deputy. Now you pick my own junior brother as a uh, chief of staff. Now again, I hear that uh, the, uh, I see the, my friend here, my colleague, Nelson, and he says it's now your chief press secretary. Yeah, well, this government is favor me. The Vatek Bill. Thank you for uh, appointing my colleague, Nelson uh, Chikudi, for as a uh, chief, uh, chief, uh, chief press secretary. And uh, we now ask for this. Thank you very much. And uh, we felicitate with you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Vice President General of the River State Council of Islamic Affairs, Alaji Ambassador Nasir Uba, and your entourage. Let me, just like you said, not in any special order, but recognize one of our own because you know I'm from the Riverland side and we pay respect to our labors. Our labor, Alaji Asari Dabubo. 
gentlemen of the press. I want to say that the government and the good people of River State join in celebrating this very special period with you. It's a period when you go into fasting to pray for the peace and progress of not just our state, but our country and the world. We're in a very difficult period globally. So the essence of this period is very, very important to the well-being and coexistence of everyone, not just in Nigeria, but in the world at large. So I join you to say, just like the common people will say, Barakada, I think uh, Barakada Sala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> support that we just did. We are just starting. And you know the economic situation of the country. So I will appeal with you to manage the little we could do this time. Allah. Going forward by the special grace of God, or Allah. We will, we will improve on the numbers. Amen. Amen. But I want to appeal to some of you. I know that you have your blogs. You have the, the Yoruba, you have the Aosa, you have this, you have that. Somehow there was a few adjustments from the original proposal. Please just accept it the way it is because we got some situation and we needed to adjust. It, the adjustment came from me when I was convinced that that was what we needed to do so we could accommodate more people. So I apologize for whatever inconvenience that must have caused anybody. Please. Thank you, Governor. Uh, let me also thank this, uh, this council for the great job they are doing for us in this state. I had a meeting with you some months back on the issue of first men and farmers. And immediately you started working on it. I can boldly say that though we still have some of this issue, but not like some other states that you keep hearing as men, farmers, this but you were able to bring this situation to at least a level where we could sleep with our two eyes closed in the States. So I want to thank you, thank you for that support. But, but I'm not surprised that you have to do that. You have First of all, you have confirmed that our administration, not my administration, our administration, has the interest of everyone at heart. Yes. We do not intend to stop you from worshipping, from worshipping your, your God. We do not intend and we will not be any party to any cause. I will destroy your worship centers. We will not directly or indirectly cause any harm to any worshiper. So when you are aware of all these things and you know that this government gives you that level of support, you, what do you owe the government? Is to reciprocate, to support the administration. And I thank God that you're doing it and everyone is seeing relationship that we have because we need to work together yes. for the progress of our state 
You are living here. You live here. You are part of this state. Yes. It's not an issue of because you are not from uh, uh, Andonia, you are not from this. For the fact that you are living here, you do your business here, you are a reverse person. <laughs> your activity help in improving our IGR. Indirectly, what we also get from you helps the government to make progress in aspect of development. So what are we saying about is not a parasitic relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship. So I want to thank you for all the support. Uh, you did mention about our investment, some of the ones you know. I will choose not to talk about it. We are just the government, like you said, we came in with so much excitement that we're coming to do work for our dear state. But somehow, a few things happen along the line, or when I say along the way. We're just trying to get out of it, but especially the of God, we're out of it already. <laughs> when we are settled, some of those things, the ones that we can look into, definitely will win. Because we know the only way we can combat crime is providing employment. I don't think any criminal feels happy when he's enjoying his money because he does it in hiding. He does it with fear. When you have a legitimate means of livelihood, even if it's 10,000 naira that you're making, you enjoy it happily without fear. And I know a lot of people want that. We will visit those areas, see what we can get out of it, so that employment will be at least more for those our unemployed youth who, by virtue of not get, having anything to do, end up sorting for crime as the only way out. So I will, we will we will visit them, please. But for now, like I said, a few of them I really can't talk about it because we still need information to guide us, for us to make our position known. On the issue of the healthcare, one of the key things, uh, when I say key areas of our administration is, I've said it before, and I'm saying it again, education, healthcare, agriculture, we're not saying we will not go into infrastructure in terms of road, but we need these three key things. It will surprise you to note that an agency came to River State. They called them New Global, and they were willing to spend $5 million. Not for infrastructure, no, to train our teachers, to provide softwares and other things to improve the learning process. I told them to go around and assess the primary schools. After the assessment, you won't believe that. 75% of our primary schools have no teachers. Yes. 90% of the schools are dilapidated. So how will you now put in the $5 million? So when I say education, I really mean education. It's not education where we renovate schools and we call people for commissioning. We're talking about touching what is important. Because for us to develop, for us to get it right from the foundation, 
it is the primary school and we don't have that aspect as a foundation preparing our youth for that thing they say the leaders of tomorrow so we need to take that you come to the aspect of health the only health facility that are functional in this state is a the BMH, or you call the University University Teaching Hospital, maybe the Uniport Teaching Hospital. The other aspect that are functioning is the primary health care, those health centers. As we came on board, we had to do everything that was within our power to make sure that they function. Now, you see so much pressure. The primary health care centers have a limit of what they can attend to. So the pressure is always in the tertiary institution, which is what you call the teaching hospital. We have already taken it upon ourselves by special grace of God. The next one or two weeks, we are going to make sure that we revisit the five zonal hospitals to make sure that they function. Now, when they function, they give support to these primary health services. Uh, centers. Healthcare, you need to be alive. When you go to school, you, you need good health services. It helps to reduce a lot of issues. A lot of people die as, as a result of minor illnesses and unavailability of health centers well equipped with qualified personnel. So we know it is important. It might not be something people are seeing, but that is the key things to development and the most things that people need to say, yes, we have a functional government. You already know what we're doing and what we're trying to do in the aspect of agriculture. God being on our side, it will work and work well for every one of us. Oh, my God. So, today, it's not a day for us to read our scorecard. It is a day that we're supposed to say, our Muslim brothers, I'm doing this because he also went that line. So let me also help to, you know, make the equation balance. You know, when you're, when you're looking for X and Y, he has already provided the value of X. So I also need to make sure that I solve it in such a way that the Y and the S will balance. So that's what I did. So by coming down to the main business of today, I want to thank you again for what you're doing in our state. I believe strongly that it gets to a time in life it doesn't matter the number of people that are standing with you. It doesn't matter the side of the shore that you're standing. But when you know you're standing on what is right, you can stand alone. Yes. I'm happy this afternoon realizing that this journey that we thought we were standing alone, we have the whole country standing with us. You represent the country. So we're happy. And we assure you, we will not disappoint you. Amen. Amen. We will continue to stand for what is just. We will not, for any reason, allow any man, any woman, play with or to toy with what is the most important thing to a man his dignity we will not allow it we will continue to fight not physical fight but with every other means that we know intellectual fight that is required that we can apply to defend the cause 
of our dear state. So we ask for your support, for your prayer. And we know that when you go for the pilgrims and you go to that place that Abraham prayed, <laughs> when Lot had problem, it was there he prayed now, so that God then delivered him from the problem that he almost entered in Saddam and Gomorrah. Eh? <laughs> when you come back, our story would be different. Yes. 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 So yes. thank you for your support. I wish you a successful Ramadan. I know that when you live here, you go and slaughter the remaining. Let's slaughter it. No, it's the next one. It's the next one. one. When you slaughter, bring the head for me. Oh. <laughs> because I'm the head now. So let, me thank, let me thank all of you again. Thank you. God will bless you. Allah will continue to support you. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.